Hey, lovely viewers welcome to my channel show out. Shocking twist in young and the restless arrest threats, secret alliances, and explosive breakups. In a whirlwind of drama, Jack threatens to have his own son, Kyle, arrested, sparking a family feud that could land Kyle behind bars. But that's not all, Daniel forbids Chance from searching for crucial evidence, while Claire teaches a sinister lesson under Victor's watchful eye, turning the power dynamics upside down. Just when you think the drama couldn't get any thicker, Audra exposes Victor's secret to Jack, forming an unlikely alliance that could free Kyle or throw him deeper into chaos. Meanwhile, Sharon weaves a web of lies and Nick's mixed signals leave her questioning everything. Summer faces shocking evidence about Daniel, sending her spiraling and potentially ending her romance with Chance. Could this lead to Daniel's arrest and a jail cell showdown? To top it off, Phyllis spills wild stories, leaving everyone in disbelief, and Kyle's prison wake-up call raises the stakes, will Victor really betray Jack's son? Don't miss how these jaw-dropping events could reshape the lives of Genoa City's most powerful players. Jack makes threats to put Kyle under arrest, while Sharon lies as flat as a carpet. Friday, October 11, 2024, Jack and Diane find out that Kyle stole from Jabot, Sharon lies to Chance, and Victor assists Abby and Devin with a significant issue on the young and the restless today. Upon reaching Victor's office, Kyle informs him that he arrived as quickly as possible. Is he aware that he fired Audra? Victor queries. Kyle claims he heard it all, saying she truly struggles to admit defeat. Victor claims to have kept his half of the agreement, but has he kept his? Kyle claims that when Glissade's new product launches, Jabot won't know what hit them. Jack sees Diane as he enters society. He sidesteps her and approaches Abby, who is excited about her mother returning for the nuptials. They discuss how love is in the air and how Tracy is back with Alan. The tension between him and Diane is noticed by Abby. As Devin enters, he murmurs, wish me luck, and moves to join Diane. When he greets Abby, she informs him that Jack and Diane are having problems in paradise. She's hoping they can resolve things before their nuptials. Devin responds, I think so. Our issues are more serious. Abby finds out that the venue for their wedding has to close because of structural damage. Due to the short notice, Devin is unable to locate a substitute location. He is concerned that they ought to consider rescheduling the wedding. They can't, says Abby, this is her mother's coming home. Devin is not interested in interfering with her ideal wedding. Jack confronts Diane at their table regarding her hurried departure from the athletic club. She gets ready to turn her back on him. There is no use attempting to resolve anything until he accepts that their son is accountable for his deeds. All of a sudden, they receive a notification regarding a glissade press release from their PR representative. Diane gives a gasp. Their merchandise has been stolen by Glissade. He gives Kyle a compliment on his efforts in Victor's office. His folks are going to go crazy. Kyle claims the joy has been all his own, saying, you have stepped up in every way. They must now determine if he is capable of managing the entire enterprise. In response, Kyle says he doesn't have any more desires. He is urged by Victor to prove to the world that he is stronger than his father ever could be. Nikki praises Claire at the club for setting up their lunch together. After talking about writing, Claire says she wanted to talk to her about something. She informs her grandma that she has received an offer for a different job, and Mariah and Tessa want her to take care of Aria. Nikki feels pleased for her. She takes great pride in her high demand. And now you can work with me to negotiate an even higher salary. Claire insists that she had no intention of using their gathering as a negotiating ploy. It's never too early to realize your worth, according to Nikki. Going for it with nothing more than that is perfectly okay. 
Claire is interested in learning more about the position and its perks. Nikki promises they will address that, but for now, everything is uncertain. Things will happen swiftly once they do. She is ready to give freely. Claire makes fun of the free food and beverages Mariah and Tessa gave her. Nikki believes she can provide a package that is competitive. Claire is highly conflicted about whether to work in the family business and have an influence, even if she enjoys working with kids. Nikki believes that as a nanny, she may also have an influence. She'll have my complete support no matter which direction she goes. She informs Chance that she just got home from supper with Nick at Sharon's house. She extends an invitation to him and remarks that since he and Heather were previously close, it makes sense that he would be curious. She agrees that it's tragic, but she is unsure of how she can be of assistance. Sharon advises him to inquire about the investigation's progress from a few of his fellow police officers. Chance discloses that he has returned to the force and is present in an official role. Chance is reminded by Sharon that it was difficult for everyone to watch him in the hospital bed and not know if he would survive. That's not part of the strategy, according to Chance. She queries whether the fact that he is looking into Heather's death proves it wasn't an accident. Chance said that further information is being gathered. Sharon assures him that she would assist in every way she can because the idea that the murderer is still at large scares her. Sharon says she's not sure how she can help as they sit. Chance talks about her run-ins with the Romolotti family. These exchanges may have been the main cause of Heather's distress. According to Sharon, she overreacted because the tragedy brought up some tough emotions. She apologized to Daniel because it was wrong of her to disturb them. It was then that she became aware of a genuine tension that existed between him and Heather. Chance squints and says, it astonished me. What type of tension, Sharon claims that Daniel's remarks were more important. He didn't tell her about the problems they were having with Lucy, but they were both having issues getting employment. Her wish was to get away from Genoa City. Sharon feels uneasy, and Chance notes, there seemed to be some real conflict between them. Talking about it is tough, according to Sharon. As Chance's phone rings, he gets up to answer it. Sharon is informed by Cameron, nice work with the nerves. You performed admirably. You sowed precisely the correct seed to direct Detective Dreamy toward Daniel. Diane is terrified that someone is stealing their merchandise at society. This was your baby. Jack Ogles I Diane claims that when they release theirs, people will perceive them as imitations. Kyle did this as she informs Jack, because there's only one way this could have happened, and they both know what it is. He stole our recipe by breaking into the system in some way. Our son has reached an entirely new low. Victor strikes again, Jack groans. He urges Diane to stay behind and plans to face the thief. He will carry out this father-to-son, man-to-man. Devin tells Abby they'll work things out at the bar. Abby desires the nuptials that were meant to happen. She's sorry if she came across as a bridezilla. He is aware of her feelings. If it came to it, Abby would marry him in a shanty. Devin vows he won't allow things to get to that point. Victor enters the room and approaches Diane's table casually. She stands up and announces her departure. He makes fun of her over her lunchtime quarrel with Jack. Abby approaches her father to give him a hug as Diane storms off, telling him to quit trying to ruin her family. When she inquires about his actions, he responds, What do you care? He informs her about the lunchtime scene with Jack and Diane. Devin joins them as he thinks she's upset. They inform Victor that they are unable to locate a new wedding site and that their current one is closed. Victor promises that their wedding will be a delightful surprise, and he has the ideal location for it. When Jack sees Kyle at the Abbott residence, he exclaims, How could you do this to us? 
Kyle responds that he's trying to celebrate and that he's killing the vibe. He brags about their latest offering. Jack exclaims, you took it, Kyle asserts that he is not guilty unless proven so. Jack cautions that business theft is a very serious offense. Is it truly your intention for Harrison to lose a parent to prison, Kyle believes his father ought to commend him for having a huge vision. Jack states once more that he took the formula. It never occurred to him that his son could do something so heinous. In Kyle's view, business is just about the first person to cross the finish line. He will win. Jack informs Kyle that cooperation and respect are essential in business. Or did I miss something, he was trained not to cry over spilled milk, according to Kyle. He believes Chabot ought to be ashamed of themselves for falling behind. Jack realized that he had gone too far in his retaliation. He apologizes for making this so personal. He seems exaggerated to Kyle. Jack says again that he overreached himself, saying, I'm not sure if you can get away with this. Now you see what happens when your so-called family does something unforgivable, spits Kyle. Victor has the ideal setting for Abby and Devin to begin their life together at society. Devin thanks him and Abby gives him a hug. Abby remarks that her dad just gave her the greatest wedding gift ever as Nikki approaches. Her father says he has the ideal location, but she clarifies that the venue fell through. Abby cautions that they need to let the guests know where to go, while Nikki concerns about the logistics. It will happen here in Genoa City, according to Victor. Everything is in his control. Can they see the space first, Abby asks. Nikki advises them to give up on trying to extract information from Victor because, of late, he has been surprising everyone. Devin and Abby wonder what more he's accomplished recently. Victor promised Nikki an incredible gift that she would not be able to reject. Devin inquires about the occasion, to which Victor replies that he should give his wife a gift right away. Abby finds it hard to believe anything could top the ruby necklace he gave Nikki, but Victor argues that some presents are inexplicable. When Abby expresses gratitude to her father for the gift, he responds that nothing is too much for his beloved daughter. As he and Nikki leave, Abby queries Devin, what's wrong? Devin clarifies that Nikki is simply receiving an enigmatic present from her father. He wonders what it may be since she attempted to hide. Nikki apologizes to Victor at their meal for letting him know that he was giving her a wonderful present. Victor gives her the reassurance that neither Devin nor Abby could possibly be aware of his plans to take over Chancellor and give it to his stunning bride. Victor is happy to hear that Claire is considering going there with Nikki. Cameron tells Sharon to calm down at her house. She gets upset, asking herself how she can act like that when she is lying and being questioned. After her date with Nick, Cameron says it's a huge letdown, but she needs to stop her ex from snooping around. Her future doesn't start until Daniel gets locked up. Sharon is unable to frame Daniel for a crime that he did not commit. Perhaps she can into the flat and retrieve the towels. Cameron is horrified and advises her to just come clean and move on. What impression do you think Nick will have of you and your children, is she prepared for the disgrace and humiliation? Sharon believes they would comprehend that she didn't intend to kill Heather. Cameron claims that she will spend the rest of her life in the can. Cameron tells her to lie like a rug when Chance reappears, saying, lie like you've never lied to anyone in your entire life. Chance queries Sharon's well-being. She has the freedom to choose, Cameron murmurs in her ear. Sharon offers Chance some tea as she gets up. Is Heather the subject of the call, she queries. He is unable to say. Sharon brings up their relationship hoping not to cause awkwardness because she has such happy memories of him. Chance also believes she is extremely unique. She's fortunate to be his friend. Is she all right, he queries. What's wrong? 
I have been holding something from you, Chance, and it has been weighing very heavily on me, Sharon sobs. Chance adds, I don't know what to do. I can start talking to him. I was with Heather the night she died, declares Sharon. Jack says Kyle he doesn't even recognize him at the Abbott residence. Is he ignorant of the history of Chabot? There was always respect for what John Abbott established, regardless of who departed. There is no place for this scorched earth stuff he is doing. He's not going to allow him to discredit his grandfather's legacy. Furious, Kyle asks, what are you going to do? But Jack tells him to stop beating his chest because he is only Victor's pawn in this game. When he's finished, Kyle says he's going to go give his son a good night kiss. Jack is not finished. For all of them, these last few months have been terrible. He no longer knows what to believe, but he hoped they could make it through this. He forewarns his kid that he will take all necessary legal measures if he discovers evidence that he accessed or used sensitive Chabot material. Jack doesn't want to, but he will, as Kyle sarcastically says, you let mom fire me, and now you want to arrest me. Sharon tells Chance that the night before she passed away, she had gone to Daniel and Heather's apartment at her house. She wanted to apologize to Lucy and Heather in addition to Daniel, to whom she had previously apologized. Heather appeared restless and nervous when she was alone herself. She informed her about the recent heated argument she and Daniel had. Is there a vacation she mentioned, Chance asks. No, replies Sharon, adding that there was no bag or other indication that she intended to leave town. Chance queries her about why she's only now bringing this up. Daniel is already grieving, according to Sharon. Just think of how tormented he would be to know that Heather was furious with him prior to her passing. She thought she had to be truthful since there was an inquiry going on. Cameron nods appreciatively while watching. The next update for today. The sinister Victor Les Sinclair learns as Daniel forbids Chance's search. In Friday, October 11's Young and the Restless Spoilers, it is revealed that Claire Newman will visit the Abbott estate to retrieve Harrison Abbott's swimsuit for his next lesson, which may present an opportunity for her to run into Jack Abbott. Jack will learn that Claire has her own worries after he confesses that he's had another difficult encounter with Kyle Abbott. Claire will describe Kyle's joy at setting up a trap to remove Audra Charles from Glissade. Jack will acknowledge that he thinks Victor Newman is the one behind Glissade and that the best way to harm him is through Kyle. Jack will emphasize Victor's resentment after giving Claire an update on their long-standing hostility, which extends back to before she was even born. As a result, Jack will be concerned about the dark path Victor is taking Kyle. Jack will assume that Claire's admission that she hasn't seen this side of her grandfather is because she is now a Newman and under Victor's protection. Claire will eventually press Jack to let her know how she can assist. Devin Hamilton Winters at Crimson Lights will caution Lily Winters about her alliance with Victor and have suspicions that he may be plotting to usurp Nikki Newman's position as Chancellor. Lily will act as though she understands what she's doing yet she will still be worried enough to visit Victor afterwards. Lily is going to question Victor about their arrangement and walk away if he doesn't explicitly say she will be the CEO. Lily will find Nikki in the GCAC and demand the truth in Friday's YNR episode. Nikki will confirm that she plans to run Chancellor herself and will come clean about knowing about Victor's deceit. Lily will declare that she is done with both Nikki and Victor before storming away, despite the fact that Nikki will be contrite and invite Lily to join her team. Devin and Nate Hastings will discuss the Victor drama back at the coffee shop before moving on to Nate's recent visit with Amy Lewis. Nate will clarify that Amy had a romantic relationship with his father, Nathan Hastings Sr., in the past. Amy asked Nate to come grab some souvenirs, as it turns out, but Nate says the mood was strange, as if everything was a cover and Amy was just trying to figure out who he was. Nate will find the situation odd and won't understand why Amy would do that. 
Chance Chancellor will turn up at Daniel Romilotti Jr.'s house to inform him of Sharon Newman's visit on Heather Stevens' final night of survival. Daniel will be disappointed that Sharon only revealed this to him now and would highly doubt that Heather would have confided in her. Daniel would also maintain that he had resolved their conflict and that their most recent exchange was affectionate. Chance will opine that Heather's allegation of their altercation may have been a front for something else. Daniel will become enraged and say that Chance's suggestion that Heather may have been having an affair is ludicrous. Nevertheless, Chance will want to investigate this angle thoroughly before setting it away. In light of this, Chance will be hoping to get permission to search Daniel's residence in order to look for any evidence that might support the theory. Daniel will vehemently object to Chance going through Heather's belongings and disrespecting her memory. Daniel will storm out of the room after claiming that Chance knows how to get out. The next update for today. How a young and restless on October 10th could lead to Jack punishing Kyle. He won't ever anticipate this move. On the young and the restless, Kyle has a history of being conceited, entitled, and conceited. But he was operating within standard parameters until the show that aired on October 10th. He was no better than Nicholas or Victoria, nor was he any different from Billy. But now, Kyle is experiencing both fresh highs and lows. He genuinely broke the law to appease Victor and mistreat his own family. Jack had a word with him. Here's how he may discipline his son, though, who thinks he is infallible. Not a son of mine. On Victor's behalf, Jack had the option to disavow Kyle the first time he attempted to sabotage Jabot. Or the subsequent one. However, Jack didn't. He continued to give his cherished son opportunities to make amends and fly straight. However, Kyle interpreted Jack's kindness as evidence that his father was feeble and would keep letting Kyle bully him. Okay, Kai Kai, three strikes and you're out. The replacing. Kyle's belief that Jack has no other choices for an heir is a major contributing factor to his conceit. For many years, Kimo, Kyle's older brother, and their father were at odds. And he's passed away now. For a few months, Jack adored Kimo's daughter Ali, but she left for Paris with Noah Newman and hasn't been heard from since. Jack has to figure something out because Harrison, Kyle's kid, is too young to be given company management responsibilities. It's Kyle or nothing at all. The world is run by girls. Hey, slow down a bit. Abby, your cousin, is still present. She is a Newman, indeed. However, she developed a stronger bond with the Abbott family thanks to her mother Ashley. Up until the moment to show up and pull off a spectacular gesture, such as organizing Abby's wedding without sharing any information with the bride and groom, Victor hardly remembers Abby's existence. What if Jack proposed to Abby the Abbott Empire? She's the ideal candidate to unseat her father as Abbott Chancellor, especially since her son Dominic is also a Chancellor, which would make the win even more delicious. We're not sure who needs to be humbled more at this point, Kyle or Victor. The next update for today. Jack discovers Victor's secret alliance, which could set Kyle free. According to teasers for Monday, October 14th, the young and the restless, Audra Charles will go out on a journey to reclaim what is rightfully hers. Fans of YNR are aware that Audra was incensed when Kyle Abbott usurped the glissade throne from her, but she is determined to fight back. Audra isn't prepared to simply give up on the firm she worked so hard for, based on what she promised Sally Spectra. Since Audra has always desired to lead Glissade alone, the fact that Kyle took the lead has just strengthened her resolve to reclaim it. Naturally, it might be more difficult stated than done to pull that off. Audra might use a new alliance because she'll need some assistance if she hopes to force Kyle out. This could be the reason Audra is about to meet with Jack Abbott, who is expected to receive some exciting news and even an alluring offer. 
Jack will receive information from Audra regarding Victor Newman, the unidentified Glissade investor who convinced Kyle to work for him. Jack isn't going to be shocked because he had figured that was how it was going to happen. Audra might, however, believe that what matters most is what occurs next and question if Jack would be open to working together. Jack's consideration of an Audra alliance is unlikely to please Diane Jenkins Abbott, but he will listen to her. Audra may argue that since they both want Kyle out of Glissade, they have the same goal. Perhaps Audra will advise them to cooperate so that Jack can free his son from Victor's schemes. In exchange, Audra might be able to reclaim the throne and eventually rule Glissade without Kyle. If Jack agrees, he might find it difficult to persuade Diane that this is the best course of action. In an attempt to prevent a fight, Jack might decide to keep this possible relationship a secret, but doing so might cause further problems in his marriage. Chance Chancellor, in the meantime, is ready to infuriate Daniel Romilotti Jr. by requesting a search warrant and thoroughly inspecting his flat. Sharon Newman is waiting nervously somewhere else to see if the evidence she hid at Daniel's house is found. Cameron Kirsten could reassure Sharon that she made the correct decision and that she's virtually home free if any doubts start to sneak in. According to our forecasts, Sharon will eventually encounter some difficulties, but for the time being she may rest easy knowing that she has successfully covered her tracks. The next update for today. Victor is inspired by Darth Vader. Will Lily acknowledge the evil empire at last? Spoilers for Friday, October 11's episode of The Young and the Restless demonstrate that Victor has been re-watching The Empire Strikes Back. Recall the incident in which Vader alters their conditions and cautions Lando, saying, Pray I don't change it again, yes, Victor treats Lily in that way. Scheme Q Victor had been deceiving Lily from the start in an attempt to get her assistance in removing Abbott Chancellor from Billy. Victor rejected Nikki's concerns, even though she didn't think it was a very kind thing to do. This is how business magnates operate. Women he calls my baby, grow up. Up until now, Victor has been trying to hide Lily's true feelings. However, he is no longer even capable of bearing that. Lily is given the new guidelines by Victor. She had better be happy lest Victor decides to turn the tables on her once more. The manner in which we were. In order to show Victor what a fantastic businessman he is, Kyle betrayed his family. Diane is upset with Kyle. Diane has Jack fuming at her. Claire doesn't understand. Jack makes an effort to clarify their convoluted familial structure. Does Jack really think he can shock Claire, given that she was abducted as a baby, assumed to be dead, and raised by an aunt who attempted to kill her entire family? The Third Wheel Nate has returned to Genoa City. Did we know he'd gone? He was making Audra's life more difficult when we last saw him, but he believes he is doing her a favor. Now, Nate thinks Audra will benefit from some new knowledge he has. Is he aware that she was fired? Is he aware that Kyle outwitted her? How humiliating! The next update for today. Summer is horrified by shocking Daniel evidence, and Phyllis shares wild tales. Daniel Romilotti Jr. will be forced to give up his hunt for an apartment, according to the Young and the Restless Spoilers preview video for the week of October 14th to 18th. Chance Chancellor might return soon with a search warrant since Daniel won't grant him authorization. Naturally, that will result in the finding of the evidence-gathering objects that Sharon Newman hid. Daniel will be put on notice as soon as the bloody towel and Heather Stevens' phone are discovered. Chance will tell Summer Newman later on some unsettling evidence that was discovered at Heather and Daniel's residence. Chance's admission that things don't seem good for her brother right now will shock Summer. Chance might guess that Daniel will go to jail for being the reason behind Heather's death, but Summer will undoubtedly argue that he is innocent. She will meet with Jack Abbott after speaking with Audra Charles. 
Audra will maintain that Victor Newman has been manipulating Kyle Abbott for the entire time and that he is Glissade's silent investor. Although Jack had a gut feeling that Victor was the one in charge at Glissade, Audra will confirm it and possibly even propose a partnership. Audra may believe that Jack and she have similar objectives because Jack wants Kyle to escape Victor's control and Audra wants to take back control of Glissade. Jack should naturally be leery of trusting Audra, but perhaps she will try to persuade him to make a bargain that will benefit both of them. The 30-year anniversary episode of Michelle Stafford should be discussed next. It is scheduled to run on October 18th. Seems like the setup for that extremely special show is in Y and R's weekly preview video. Heather's unfortunate destiny has already caused Lucy Romilotti to experience a great deal. Things will undoubtedly get worse after Daniel is placed at the top of the suspect list. Phyllis will still ask Lucy if she would like to learn more about her grandma when they sit in the park. There should be some amazing flashbacks and crazy tales from the past because Phyllis will have a few things to share. The next update for today. Why Nick on Young and the Restless might be sending mixed signals to Sharon. Does she only think about it? Sharon is falling hard for Nick once more. During their dinner date, she behaved like a happy schoolgirl from the young and the restless. But Nick might be sending her contradictory messages. A chic reunion. Sharon got ready for Sharon and Nick's date. Nick had given her a gorgeous one-shoulder dress in a salmon hue, and she wore it with jewelry. Faith, Sharon's daughter, was perplexed by her mother's attire as well. She was informed with excitement that Sharon was having dinner with her father. Faith was thrilled about the prospect of her parents getting back together because of this. It wasn't just Faith who was taken aback. Nick was equally taken aback by Sharon's extravagant outfit for their date. He wore trousers and a checkered flannel shirt. It's possible that Sharon misinterpreted their dinner date. She asserted that her life has a new lease. She will simply put on makeup whenever she feels like it. Entirely within her mind? The therapist says that these days, she's in a better mental state. That is still to be determined. An investigation into a murder centers on Sharon. In addition, she can hear Cameron's voice within her mind. Her mental state has prevented her from understanding reality. Therefore, Nick's benevolence may be sending Sharon contradictory signals. Sharon has misinterpreted his care for her well-being as a romantic relationship. She's been having fantasies about giving him a kiss and making love. This might imply that Sharon will develop an obsession with Nick. Other than being a co-parent and learning about her mental health, he has no interest in her at this time. Her crush on the schoolgirl could be crushed. She had expected Nick to ask her out on a dinner date, but he didn't. All he wanted to do was read her mood. Nick could be able to recognize clues that Sharon's problems persist. Nick is concerned about Sharon and wants to know why her mental health is failing. Will Nick's genuine motivations and Heather's death force Sharon to confront reality? The next update for today. Angry Summers Split does Daniel's arrest put an end to their chance romance? According to previews for The Young and the Restless, Summer Newman may soon have a valid reason to flip against Chance Chancellor. Summer and Chance enjoy a lovely, sustaining relationship right now, but things could go south for Summer soon. This is due to Sharon Newman's unwavering determination to hold Daniel Romilotti Jr. accountable for Heather Stevens' death. If Sharon's plot is successful, Daniel might be arrested, consider the impact that will have on his family. Summer adores her sibling and will undoubtedly become enraged if Chance puts him in handcuffs. Chance might be forced to follow the evidence, but since Sharon has fabricated evidence against Daniel and is providing false leads, it might mislead him. Summer will never think Daniel is at fault, no matter how dire things appear to be.
Summer would undoubtedly believe Daniel is being set up and attempt to inform Chance of this as she is aware of his heart and has personally witnessed his anguish over Heather. Even if Summer is trying hard to show Chance that he is completely incorrect, Chance can feel helpless. Chance may be forced to arrest Daniel and put him in a jail cell by the police chief, even if Chance has some persistent reservations of his own. But, Chance could fall for Sharon's ruse for a while if she really is a con artist. We are aware that Chance has been inquiring about Daniel and Heather's disputes, so Sharon will just serve to confirm suspicions that already exist. Chance is aware that a deceased woman's romantic partner is frequently the target of suspicion in circumstances such as these. Despite Chance's affection for Summer, he cannot overlook Daniel as a potential suspect because he is her brother. But Summer might take it personally and be horrified by Chance's behavior. It might not be forgiven in Summer's eyes if she has to watch Chance bind Daniel and believes it is happening unfairly. Angry Summer's split might be imminent, depending on how things turn out. Will Summer fire Chance for not seeing the obvious setup and for Daniel's arrest? This is the kind of event that might put a stop to Summer and Chance's romance, according to our YNR predictions, so stay tuned for any split announcements that may be forthcoming. The next update for today. Here's how young and the restless Lily Brooks O'Brien got ready for Lucy's loss. Lily Brooks O'Brien talked candidly about the steps she had to take in order to accurately depict Lucy's grief as well as her sense of accountability for it. The young and the restless family is grieving and in shock over Heather's unexpected passing. The performance from Daniel and Lucy Romilotti has been amazing, and they are taking it very hard. Lily Brooks O'Brien, who played Lucy, talked candidly about what drove her during those devastating loss scenes. Numerous subtle layers were present. O'Brien told Soap Opera Digest that while he was surprised that Heather was going to die, this kind of event is part and parcel of the soap opera experience. As a young actor, she also felt it was her duty to depict Lucy's pain as realistically as possible, she said, I found it very important to try to represent that the best way that I could. O'Brien thought that in addition to Lucy's denial, there was also some remorse because she and Heather were having small arguments. She enjoyed that Lucy was in such denial and kept coming up with reasons why Heather couldn't possibly be dead, saying that the numerous subtle layers there made it a fun scene to play. Because of this, she observed, Lucy is in a really difficult place because she is always thinking about the what-ifs and what she wishes she could have said to her. They supported one another. As her on-screen father and scene partner, Michael Graziade was another thing O'Brien was grateful for. Together, they managed to figure out how Daniel would break the news to Lucy about her mother's passing and how Lucy would respond. She said, that was really cool, and it was really good to have Graz there to kind of ground me. She complimented Graziade even more. She said, working with him is such a dream, and she was overjoyed with the scenes that came out. She felt they were there for one other throughout such a trying time, and she appreciated his support. It's unclear if Heather is actually dead, but for the moment, we're feeling Lucy's suffering alongside her. The next update for today. Kyle's jail wake-up call, does Victor dismiss Jack's son? According to spoilers for The Young and the Restless, Kyle Abbott might have gone too far. Kyle is guilty of corporate theft since he took Jabot's recipe and passed it off as Glissade's novel new product. In the episode from October 10, Jack Abbott informed Kyle of this and warned his son that jail time was an option. Jack questioned whether Kyle truly intended for Harrison Abbott's father to end up in prison since Tara Locke, Harrison Abbott's mother, is already incarcerated. Although Kyle appeared to be playing along, Jack appeared sincere when he vowed to have Kyle arrested if necessary. Should Jack obtain evidence of Kyle's culpability and his son persists in experimenting with fire, he may ensure that Kyle is taken away in handcuffs. Jack would have to think about what that would do to Harrison, of course. If Grandpa Jack did send Kyle to prison, 
Would Harrison be left fatherless? It's possible that Jack will become tired of Kyle and decide to discipline him. Jack may see Kyle's incarceration as a warning and an opportunity to expose Victor Newman's lack of loyalty. Victor has started taking precautions to guard against the catastrophic consequences of corporate theft. Fans of YNR will remember Victor's chat with Michael Baldwin because he is relying on his legal representation to keep him safe. When all of this comes to a head, Victor might not feel the same way about defending Kyle. Victor could easily brush Kyle under the rug, so he could end up being the victim of any workplace conflict. As part of his own selfless deed, Victor may terminate Kyle and issue a statement expressing his disapproval with the previous CEO's behavior. When Kyle is no longer needed, Victor might turn on him and discard him like Abbott trash. While Jack would undoubtedly not let Kyle to spend a significant amount of time behind bars, he might cause Kyle to endure enough hardship to witness Victor's true nature. Even while Jack would ultimately back off, he might feel that it's time to give Kyle a little fright and turn him down a notch. Thanks for watching this videos. Please hit the subscribe button for more updated news.